Time limits have been around in games for a long time. I suppose it made sense in the arcade, but was it ever actually needed for home games like Super Mario Bros.? Today, we don't really see time limits like we used to, but what about a game that turns time limits into time management mechanics that arch over the entire game? That can be pretty controversial because people do like to take their time in games. But to me, these few games that force you to manage your time wisely can become so much more than they would have been without. Many of them have become personal favorites, so let's take a look at why I love them so much. An obvious recent example is Lightning Returns, which from early previews I felt like it was going to be a game that was made just for me. Now hey, I'm with you that Final Fantasy XIII never needed to be a trilogy and that the story is a bit questionable, but Lightning Returns hit so many right notes for me with its gameplay. Here we've got a time limit looming over the entire game. You've got 13 days until the end of the world, though you do have to earn days past the initial six. I loved trying to cram everything I could into each game day, planning where I needed to be and when. One of Lightning's most important abilities is Chronostasis, which, for a cost of battle rewards, stops the clock for a while, letting you accomplish even more quests in each day. Now, to be honest, I probably used chronostasis a little bit too much, and I did feel like I was starting to run out of things to do in the last several days of the game. Really, what made Lightning Returns click for me was the moveset customization, where you're essentially building your own Final Fantasy jobs. The excellent battle system and quest design that found the right balance of guidance without holding your hand quite as much as many other open world games do. So while the overarching time limit did give me a sense of urgency that helped keep me engrossed in the game, it actually ended up being farther down on my list of favorite things in Lightning Returns than I would have expected. Let's go back to the beginning. The sixth Zelda game, Majora's Mask, is the first time I experienced this sort of persistent time limit mechanic. Back in 2000, I largely measured a Zelda game's awesomeness by how many dungeons it had. Ocarina of Time was mildly disappointing for its nine or so dungeons compared to A Link to the Past's 11 or 12. So Majora's Mask having only four main dungeons did worry me a bit, but I was looking for other things to impress me. Despite the title, the main hook of Majora's Mask has less to do with masks and transformations than it has to do with the repeating cycle of three days. When you play the Song of Time to reset the cycle, you keep all of the critical inventory that you've earned, but the entire world returns to the dawn of the first day. What makes this cool is that it allowed the developers to create elaborate preset paths for every character to follow through every second of the three days. Learning what every character does, at what time, and then figuring out when, where, and how to influence them to change the outcome of events is hugely rewarding. It's this uniqueness that has me on some days think that, well, maybe Majora's Mask is my favorite Zelda game. Maybe. Anyway, something I always wanted to try in Majora's Mask was to see if I could beat the game within a single cycle. Now, there is one cycle at the start of the game that you are required to reset, but I wanted to beat the game without returning to the beginning after that point. So, on New Year's Eve in 2009, after some research and not quite enough practice, I decided to ring in 2010 on the Backloggery live stream with my own countdown to the end. After a miraculous recovery, I defeated the last boss that's required before you can stop the clock, with about 20 slowed down game minutes to spare, yes! which translates to about 48 real world seconds. <laughs> Sure, maybe I could have done a lot better if I were an actual speedrunner and had practiced more or used special tricks, but the close shave makes this perhaps my favorite personal gaming achievement ever.
As a side note, the only other game I've ever played that does anything quite like Majora's Mask is one of Square Enix's lesser known PlayStation 2 games, Radiata Stories. I don't recall it having the best battle system, but it's a pretty funny game. I can't do nothing yet. You can't do nothing? And it actually has full-on NPC schedules and movement paths, which they follow religiously every game day. And if you follow these characters and figure out how to solve their problems, there's a really strong chance that they'll join you because there are 177 unique recruitable characters. So, if you enjoy the schedule-driven NPC interaction in Majora's Mask, give Radiata Stories a try too. So then, there's the original Pikmin. This is the first game I ever played with a time limit that covers the entire game. If you don't collect all of Captain Olimar's critical spaceship parts within 30 days, his life support systems will fail. Pretty serious stuff. And let me tell you, it got me pretty motivated. I couldn't stop thinking about Pikmin, even when I wasn't playing the game. I was thinking about what routes I was going to explore, which parts I was going to go for next, and whether I had time to spend an extra day growing my Pikmin army instead of collecting spaceship parts. To be honest, it's actually not terribly difficult to meet the deadline, but even still, I really enjoy the pressure that the time limit put on me, making me feel much more invested in Olimar's plight and keeping me on task. The controversial time limit was removed from Pikmin 2 and, I don't know, it just didn't have the same impact. I mean, it was still good, but it never grabbed me like the first game and I ended up not even finishing it for three or four years. Pikmin 3 offers a bit of a compromise. You collect fruit to extend your juice supplies, which allows your crew to survive for another day. This is pretty cool because similar to Lightning Returns, you have to actually earn the extra days. However, it is really easy to build up a huge buffer on your supplies, so the tension that the first game had just isn't quite there. I avoided the Persona games for years because I thought the gun imagery in Persona 3 was kind of unsettling and... I'm always skeptical about games where fans obsess over character interactions because that's no guarantee that I'll love it myself. Not to mention randomized dungeon design was a long-standing no-no in my book. But I found the bright colors of Persona 4 to be much more immediately appealing and the story sounded interesting so I finally decided to buy it in 2011 and it very much defined my August of that year. I took time that I'd earned off work just to play it all day. Obviously, the story and characters were a huge part of that, but I was surprised by just how much I was completely into the gameplay too. Random dungeons and all. The daily schedule system was a key component that tied all of it together for me. Every day, you decide what to do after school. Socializing with friends or doing other activities that increase your social stats are excellent uses of your time, not just for story reasons, but also because your social links improve your party's battle capabilities. Of course, dungeon crawling is also a vital after-school activity, especially because every time there's a character to rescue from a dungeon, you have a limited number of weeks to rescue them. I made a ridiculous number of saves, just in case I accidentally made horrible use of my time, but I did just fine anyway. Major story events mostly occur on predetermined dates, and I love the feeling of progression through the weeks and months toward a definite conclusion. I kept feeling like I needed to play just one more day. I'd been told that it would be difficult to get into Persona 3 after Persona 4, but I was quite surprised. I played the PSP version, and once I got used to a different setting and cast of characters, I fell in love with the game for many of the same reasons as Persona 4. The last few months of the game's story had me so on edge that I felt like I couldn't concentrate on anything else if I didn't just hurry up and see it through to the end. All in all, I hold both games in equally high esteem as some of the best RPGs I've ever played, and Persona 5 is probably my most anticipated upcoming release. Of course, time management is no guarantee that I'm going to love a game. Dead Rising 2 is the only game in that series I've played, and I thought it was awful. Mega Man X5 kind of has a time limit too, and I didn't like it either. I've also enjoyed a few other games with less critical time management aspects. 
While the endless nights and unlimited hot springs recovery ruined the original Harvest Moon for me, I did enjoy Harvest Moon 64. And I recently beat Rune Factory 4, which I really loved. I was impressed by the gameplay in Pandora's Tower, much more than I expected to be. One feature being an ever-present meter that shows how much time you have left to return to Elena with monster flesh. Even something like The World Ends With You, which didn't have a true time limit, kept me hooked on its story because I was anticipating the conclusion at the end of seven days. And you may not think of it, but Castlevania II can be played with a deadline of sorts because you won't get the best ending if you play for too many game days or if you use too many continues. If you have any suggestions for other games like this that I might enjoy, let me know in the comments. My girlfriend keeps saying that I should try the Atelier series because of how it features time limits and travel time. Maybe I'll give one of them a try someday. I know that strict schedules and time limits aren't for everyone, but for me, they can add the secret ingredient that makes an otherwise merely good or great game incredible and unforgettable. I love the tension and I just feel more involved. So if you've ever quit a game because you hated the time limit, why not give it another go with a fresh mindset? It might just become an all-time favorite.